back in 1971, just at the beginning of when structures of proteins were being determined, it was quite a task to be able to distribute those data if you wanted to. The Protein Data Bank began as a grassroots effort on the part of many scientists to figure out a way to archive protein structures. In 1998, the management of the Protein Data Bank turned to the Research Collaboratory for Structural Bioinformatics, RCSB, uh, and we began to manage those data. The PDB had its origins with just seven X-ray structures of, uh, of proteins. It's now nearly 100,000 entries in, in the archive, uh, more than 40 years later. There's literally a million downloads of entries in the archives on a daily basis. The information can be used by anyone for any purpose with, without any restrictions. The RCSB PDB provides the users the ability to visualize molecules, to do all kinds of analysis and comparison on these structures. For the experts, this provides an opportunity to look at their protein of interest and compare it to other relatives. So the PDB is a great resource. I mean, it's the world's only single resource for protein structures. Um, and it's a wonderful resource because the whole community uses it. My lab focuses on RNA viruses. We submit them to the PDB uh, and it's available to the community so that other crystallographers can see how we've modeled things. In 2003, we formed a consortium called the Worldwide PDB in which we brought in the people from Europe and Asia uh, so that we would all work together to keep a single archive. WWPDB is a consortium of four data centers. It ensures that we have uniform archive and that the annotation practices are uniform as well. For uh, several years, um, we've been developing a new uh, common deposition and annotation tool that would be uniform for all the centers. But these four centers actually compete on how to represent the data on the data out step. At the RCSB, we have a site at Rutgers and we have a site at the University of California in San Diego. At Rutgers, uh, our primary responsibility is to curate the data. So we have people, annotators, who review the data that comes in and then they communicate with the depositors of the data to be sure that everything is as well represented as possible. Data curation is a fairly complicated task. It could be data standardization, like uh, we standardize atomic nomenclature, uh, data validation, we validate uh, model against experimental data. And importantly, we cross-reference uh, the data to other databases such as Uniprot or Drug, Drug Bank. This is uh, all done to have high quality, highly standardized, validated data that could be used by scientists and non-scientists worldwide. Molecules to some people seem to be very abstract, and in our view they're very concrete. Uh, you can hold a, mo a model of a molecule in your hand, and so one very important aspect of what we do is that we work with students and educators in order to have them understand molecules. The teaching resources that they have are really, really fantastic. The information that's available is for teaching is wonderful. They have little models and they're really, really helpful, uh, especially at the undergraduate level where you're trying to get students interested in understanding structural biology. One of the most popular resources of the RCSB PDB is the Molecule of the Month. This is an article that is written by David Goodsell so that anybody, high school students and anybody can read it and understand what this molecule looks like, how it interacts and does whatever it is supposed to do. We also have various educational resources and tutorials and lesson plans for teachers and students. The Protein Data Bank has gathered up all these educational resources into a separate section which we call the PDB 101 which presents a less complicated view of the protein data bank so that they're not overwhelmed by the large amount of data and complexity that is archived. About three quarters of our users are not the individuals who are depositing the data into the archive. They're people who are simply using that information for either teaching or, or research purposes. Now our focus, while remaining true to our depositors, 
is shifting towards uh, the user base to make the information about the protein data bank available to the students as they begin to explore biology. One of the goals that we are striving towards is to present a structural view of biology. We want the users to come to the PDB and understand a biological process, a disease process, a treatment program, or any other aspect of biology from a molecular structural perspective. The great wish, I think, would be to be able to predict protein structure by simply looking at the sequence. That's how this all began many, many years ago. That's very important intellectually as well as medically.